All right, diving into the metaverse again today. And of course, we want to do it with someone special. We want to take a look at some projects that I think you guys have been asking about in the chats and dropping us all kinds of info, and that's Gala Games. Diving a little deeper, if you haven't checked out our other video, you got to check that one too. But today we're going to talk to Jason Brink. It's going to be fun. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to Tech Path. Of course, joining me is Jason Brink, who is the president of blockchain over at Gala Games. Great to have you back on the show here, Jason. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Really happy to be here. Yeah. Wonderful to connect with you and your community again. It's been uh, it's been a bit of a time. I think we were in November last time, kind of in the uh, metaverse apocalypse that seemed to be occurring at that time. And a lot of people really wanted to understand what's happening with Gala since then. So we want to dive in deep. Oh, there's sure. so gosh, since November. Yeah, so, has it really <laughs> that been that long? That's like that was pre Gallivers. Yeah, yeah. I yep. mean, I, I feel like like that's the elephant in the room that has to be mentioned. Is is that Gallivers? <laughs> was a thing. Uh, it was probably one of the most awesome things, I think, that uh, that the people who were uh, fortunate to be able to attend have experienced. Um, we had some amazing musical acts. We had some amazing game announcements. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a, an amazing kickoff to a lot of what's going on right now. Yeah, I think a lot of people got a chance to really experience Gala Games for the first time because they had not, I mean, you kind of bring up right. that virtual aspect of understanding what's happening in blockchain gaming and into a real world event like Galaverse. And it did help kind of solidify the, the connection points that a lot of people look to around projects. We see it in all sorts of developer conferences and things of that nature. So it was good that you guys did that for sure. Yeah, we, so always, Gala we always want to... Go, go, go ahead. ahead. I was just, just going to invite you to the next one. We, we have one in that. June. You need to, you need to come. So for sure, back in Vegas or where are you going to do this one? I, it's a secret right now. Uh oh. Okay. It's it's in, in Europe. It's in Europe. <laughs> I like it. Well, then that is definitely going to be a, a good time for sure. Um, from out of Galaverse, what was what do you feel was like one of the biggest takeaways for both the attendees and maybe your own sure. team to kind of understand what's happening in the space? Sure. I think for me, the biggest the biggest takeaway from Galaverse, and this is something that I want everyone to understand, uh, is that we don't mess around. When we do stuff, we do it at scale. We do it big, and we you know very much uh, abide by the go big or go home principle of uh, events and games and everything. Um, just prior to Galaverse, we had an event in South Korea. It was the, the first Spider Tank World Cup where we announced a mm -hmm. billion dollars in funding for uh, for South Korean game developers. We have continued uh, to push forward with that. And, and at Galaverse, we showed, you know, we're very, very, very serious about what we do. We had you know, Maroon 5 was there. Snoop was there. Kings of Leon were there. Had a lot of really, really, really fun uh, experiences there with everybody to show them, look, this is this is what we're building it's all connected. It's all coming together in an absolutely beautiful fashion. And we couldn't possibly be more delighted to be a part of this growing Web3 community that are all working on building this amazingly beautiful decentralized future. I think the key here with any good event is when you see um, you know, projects that you follow on an ongoing basis come to life, you know, and it's that right. that element that, you know, is I think missing in, in a lot of times in the crypto community is they don't get a chance to see exactly. those real, you know, bigger than life characters. You get to see a chance it, to see more about what's happening in the gaming side for sure. It's it's really interesting to me. I mean, the, one of the things that I personally, the biggest takeaway that I took from Galaverse is uh, that, you know, we have this amazing community out there. And to be able yeah. to meet a few hundred of them face to face. I mean, these are people that I've hung out with in Discord that have watched dozens, if not hundreds of hours of me talking. Um, and they walk up and they're like, Big Bender, oh my God, it's so great to yeah. see you. And I'm like, what's your Discord name? <laughs> um, you know, and, and it's it just this amazing, amazing community that is all growing together to in, in support of this, this mission to advance freedom in gaming and now in other areas as well. Yeah. Jason, so any, obviously you guys got a chance to release a lot of news there at Galaverse, yeah. but since then, you know, there's been a lot that's happened with Gala. There any has. kind of new new game roadmap that you can talk about? What's new in Gala? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. 
So when, when I talk about game roadmaps, there's something that I really need people to understand. Okay. And, and we typically don't use the word roadmap. It's a little bit of like a dirty word uh, when we think of things because, you know, nothing ever goes nicely according to dates, but we're building and we're working with companies that are building AAA gaming experiences. Okay. These are not, you know, one or two month long development projects. These are right. multi-year engagements with teams of dozens, if not a hundred or more people that are all working on building something that is absolutely incredible. And so when we announce a game and we begin sharing things with the community, there's usually a le quite a lead time on that before you're going to actually play that game. In some cases, uh, we had some things that we're able to, to bring games in that are quite a bit further along. We actually just last month, uh, and this was announced at our, our last, you know, event in Los Angeles uh, at the forum just before the Super Bowl. Um, although I don't know if we actually televised that. Um, we managed to snag a game that was going to go live on Steam uh, within hmm. 24 hours. And yeah. we brought that over and that's that's grit. Uh, and it's it's entering the uh, the gala ecosystem. And it is one of the most fun games I have ever played. It's incredibly fun. It's It's like you know, PUBG meets Red Dead Redemption. Um, <laughs> super, super, super fun. I mean, like like crazy gun battles on horseback next to a, a train. Like it's it's super, super cool. Um, you know, so so we have quite a few different games that are in the pro in the pipeline right now. Um, we have, I think the official number is uh, 22 games currently in production. Um, maybe half of those have been released. These are 22 games that we have fully brought into our ecosystem. They are not being released elsewhere. They're 22 games, AAA games that are coming to Gala uh, alone. And um, I mean, we spent $150 million on games in January just to yeah. you know contextualize that. So it's a lot yeah, of really, really cool stuff. Yeah, it's definitely if you look at the just the the press clippings alone, the the rally of things that are coming almost just sequentially for Gala has been mm. pretty pretty amazing. I was looking at this latest um this was a news item here uh from Yahoo. Mm -hmm. Um and this was the the kind of the play on the NFT expansion. So sure. talk to me about this cuz this is 5 billion in the next year to bolster it's non-fungible mm -hmm. offerings by buying intellectual property rights and building a theme park. Explain that one. The, they they kind of ran with that a little bit. So so <laughs> so basically, what happened is this is something that was discussed in uh, the Gala Gold community. Um, someone took that and it made its way to you know a a, a or it ended up being in an article and kind of ran with it. Um, I don't anticipate uh, any sort of theme park within the next year, just to be yeah. clear. Um, however, we are on track to spend $2 billion on games uh, this year, uh, a billion on music and a billion on movies. Um, and you can see evidence of, of what we're doing in the space uh, in some of the partnerships that we're building. You know, we recently uh, did a, an album drop with Snoop. Uh, right. We're working on, you know, integrating all sorts of other interesting things uh, in, in both the music and film spaces uh, right now. And then games, obviously, we keep, you know, running full speed at that. I think I think this this article highlights something that I'd like to touch on for just a moment, if you don't mind. For sure. Yeah. Um, I think that people don't quite know how to think of Gala and what is going on. I don't think there's anyone else in the space that's doing anything even remotely close to what we're doing. Um, and I'm positive that there's nobody in the space who's doing what we're doing at scale uh, the way that we are. I think mm -hmm. people are used to seeing projects with like one game. Um, you know, we're building a game and it has a token and it has, you know, some NFTs and things like that. I don't think there's anyone else who has quite the breadth uh, of what we're building. And so I think it's kind of confusing for people sometimes. Um, so what I would invite everyone to do is to join our discord at galagames.chat and come and hang out and actually talk to us. Cause we're there, you know, we have over 300 people on staff now. I think it was, I mean, November, it was probably 170 or something like that. Wow. I believe, um, I don't recall what it was. We're scaling so freaking quickly. That's, that's um, a lot of growth. 
it's crazy, man. Like it's, it's, it's absolutely insane. Like we'll, I'll be in, in Slack having conversations with people and there'll be conversation between engineers. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know who these people are. These are totally new people I've never met before. Um, it's, it's, it's an interesting experience, but yeah, yeah. things are going amazingly. I like the, you know, cause that's one thing, um, that you, you kind of touched on it, and that is, and we get a lot of questions about this in general. We just had a live stream today, Gala came up, um, and that is the scope of it. When you look at, so let's kind of break it down. You've got the game sure. category, uh, lots of potential acquisitions there. Then you've got lots. the music category. Yeah, lot, lots happening there. And then, of course, music, you know, I want to talk a, lot, a little bit about that, but you get the music yeah. category and then movies, you know, kind of playing into this. All of this is potentially feeding into the NFT side of things, which we'll see more and more use cases in all yeah, these entertainment. Will, sure. Yeah, in, in entertainment areas. Is there one particular? Let's talk about movies for a second. Explain to me and to our audience how Gala will be playing into the movie sector itself and applying that to the gaming industry. Well, stepping this backwards a tiny bit. Okay, what we what we found. And I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm definitely going to answer your question, but I'm going to answer it in the most backwards way possible. I'm going to tell you about <laughs> no the problem. game side first, move that into to music and then into movies. So one of the things that we, we realized is that um, there's a, there's a couple problems. One game soundtracks are usually terrible. Right. Okay. Um, they're usually just terrible, boring, sort of like canned corporate tunes, right? Occasionally you'll have a song where somebody will, uh, you know, they'll go out, a game developer will go out and they'll license some music, okay? Um, and they'll usually pay a flat fee for licensing that music, and then it will get integrated into, into the game. Um, the artist will uh, never see really much of that at all. Um, you know, once it gets split up between the label and, you know, all of the other interested parties with their hands in the cookie jar. Um, just for context, I, I ran into a guy the other day who had um, licensed a particular track uh, to the guys, and I believe it was in GTA San Andreas that this this track got licensed. Very, very well known track. I don't know if I should name names, but a very, very well known track. Probably received millions and millions of plays uh, mm-hmm. in this game alone. Um, yep. Total licensing fees were five thousand dollars. Okay. Wow. So, mm-hmm. so five thousand bucks only for that. Now, that obviously doesn't make very much sense. So, what we thought is like, okay, well. What if we kind of turn this on its head? What if we start bringing better music into the gaming space? And then what if we start actually treating musicians in a way that allows them to, to actually benefit from their art? Um, mm-hmm. Right now, if you're a musician, you know, you will release an album and, you know, you'll see that album on the top of the charts, maybe if you're fortunate, um, and you won't really make all that much money from it. Yeah. You know, you'll make tons of money on licensing, on, you know, shoe sponsorships on like any number of other things, but not from your music. So what if we started to think of new ways to do that? And once we develop an infrastructure that allows for the distribution and attribution of, of plays and tracking and all of that, you know, why can't we use it for other things? Why can't we begin yeah. using that for movies as well? And so sure. what we have is we have a, a, a fundamental need for awesome music in games that lends itself to growth and expansion in other areas as well as an amazing network of people that have been able to, you know, build some of the most amazing connections uh, in the music industry, you know, that, that I've ever seen. So, you know, it all sort of lends itself to, to, to gather, to, you know, building this, what is essentially going to become a media, uh, a media concern in the long run. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think you, you hit on it right there is the layering of where entertainment is going. Right. So much, right. so much more of it is really starting to leverage across a variety of different entertainment sectors. We've seen it Absolutely. in other distribution points, but with gaming, it kind of presents a unique proposition. I think not only for artists, but also for the gaming companies, because it starts to really separate. I'm surprised that we didn't yes. see this really take off in traditional AAA gaming studios to really see that kind of acceleration point. But I think you're right. The NFT aspect right. of this really kind of exchange it changes the game for sure well i mean i think that when you look at it from a sort of a traditional studio perspective um their number one concern is the bottom line yeah right there and and if they start paying too much money to artists to license music then you know they have to deal Mm, with sure you know shareholders and and all of that um 
what we can do is we can look at this and say, okay, well, how do we build a better ecosystem? You know, how do we take something that, you know, I mean, the music industry is, is based on, uh, you know, practices that were created in like the 1920s and 1930s. Why is this nearly century old industry still operating exactly the same way? Um, you know, and how can we, how can we bring a little bit of our innovative spirit? And I, I have to, you know, I don't want to get up on a soapbox about any of this. I, Sarah Buxton, who is uh, the head of, of Gala Music, um, you really should bring her on because mm -hmm. she'll like absolutely blow your mind in with her, you know, amazing energy and everything that she knows about the space. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, that's what it bo boils down to. And we did that with games and now we're doing it in other areas as well. Yeah, I think it's a good it's a good innovation. It also kind of expands the universe, and especially if you see the transition into the metaverse, oh, all yes. of these kind of components are going to play in and like a concert, Correct. the game, the games themselves, NFTs, obviously music and, and even film. When you look at that around the kinds of metaverse virtual concepts that could be v built in the future, what what's your vision? What is Gala's vision of what that might look like? We've seen a lot of of projects out who are attempting to go in this direction, mm. but we haven't yet really seen the vision of Gala. What are you thinking? Well, I think that that for starters, I think that the term meta metaverse is is often often misused. What we have right now in the space is we have a, a series of mini verses. You know, I I, I might call them. Um, they're not really connected. They have varying degrees of persistency. Um, and there, there is not really a way to sort of move between them, if you, if you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you actually go back and read, you know, Snow Crash and like the, the, the concept of the metaverse as it was, uh, you know, described by Neil Stevenson, it's very different from what you see today. Sure. Um, and, and that's okay. That's not necessarily a problem. It's just, you know, I think it's an interesting thing to, to note. One of the things that we're working on is we're working on the concept of the Voxverse, right? Now, a lot of you guys may have seen uh, our V1 and V2 Vox mm -hmm. characters. Yep. Uh, the first are based on Townstar, second based on Mirandas. Uh, the third ones, I really wish I could tell you about because they're really, 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 really cool. Um, but we're we're building this uh, this you know Vox centered. Uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to go so far as to call it a metaverse. I'm just going to stick with miniverse just cause I'm pedantic like that. Um, but, uh, we're working on that with, uh, Will Wright, uh, of the Sims, yeah. um, fame, you know? And so I think that that is going to be something that is, uh, going to be quite, uh, quite interesting when people are really able to, to jump in there. And I would love to see, uh, you know, different interactions. I'd like to be able to have, you know, conferences, um, and concerts in these spaces, you know, uh, get Steve Aoki up there throwing digital cake at people and, you know, Snoop uh, walking around in, in, in the ever present Snoop haze, you know, I mean, this is, I, I, I would love those sorts of uh, experiences that people would be able to have. Um, because ultimately, it boils down to how do we create? Um, how do we create that connection? How do we create uh, the ability for people to interface with one another um, without the the tiers and barriers that currently exist in our society today. Yeah. You know, which is why, I mean, when we have Snoop show up in our Discord or we have Steve mm -hmm. Aoki show up in our Discord or something like that, and people are able to just talk, you know, that's what we want. We want to foster that kind of connection and openness. Yeah, I think the the opportunities here are going to be huge for you guys, and it's just going to continue to really kind of accelerate for you, especially as you you know kind of splinter into these different categories. Yeah, I want to talk quickly on on you know you're talking about game acquisition, um, you know mm -hmm. art ac acquisition in general. What is the potential when you guys look at the landscape of what's happening out there, whether it's traditional studios, block you know blockchain studios? What are the the criteria is that you're trying to really understand what's happening in that space that would say, okay, that's a, that could be a gala project. What are some sure. of the things that would differentiate? Um, the first thing is that we, we focus on, on quality, like quality is absolutely key. If it's not fun, uh, yeah. it's not a good game and we don't want to play it. Um, and if we don't want to play it, nobody else is going to want to play it either. Um, so that's the, the first thing. So if we're looking at various projects, we're looking at various teams, 
we really zero in first on, okay, what, what is, what is going to make this super fun? How can we make this something that everybody is going to want to play? Um, and that was one of the things that we saw with grit, you know, yeah. grit is riotously fun. Like it is absolutely fun. I played, I parachuted in on my Conestoga wagon. Um, I found a horse, I rode around, I got sniped in the head as per usual. Um, you know, and, and I just had so much fun playing it. It's this amazing little mix of, um, you know, ki kind of like serious Western and then like spaghetti Western, uh, you know, ballad of Buster Scruggs, semi comedy, you know, it's, it's very fun. Um, you know, but, but that's one of the things that we look at is we look for teams that are out there building amazing stuff and that aren't getting the, getting the attention from, you know, the broader industry that they really deserve. Um, but from the aspect of great gameplay uh, yeah. and tying it into, you know, the potential blockchain side of things, a lot mm -hmm. of that is, is for many studios, a, a bit of a challenge. Is that something yeah. that you guys have been able to kind of bridge the gap to help some of oh, those? Oh, we, have, pro we yeah. have no problems bringing in, in blockchain strategies, blockchain integration, and NFT yeah. strategies. Yeah. Um, we, have a, we have a full... So we have a, we have a central core economics team that that helps build out strategies for each individual game, and then mm -hmm. each game has its own you know staff, economist, and strategist that helps you know handle uh, in depth integration and and you know planning and things like that. I so, think that's that's very key. You you talked about uh, economists actually for each game. That's that's very interesting because I think that's one of the things that's missing in a lot of blockchain games right now. Yes. In yes. essence, they've got Certainly. developers. Everybody's kind of putting in their their two cents on what that economy should do. It may not necessarily be thinking long term. And and right. as you right. know, there are many games that have had have struggled with you know maintaining sure. a sustainable sure. economy. Yeah, well, so, I mean, it's 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 not it's not easy. It's not an easy thing to do. And and to be clear, um, because somebody somebody dropped this question in in Discord. Um, when I say economists, I mean people who are functioning in that role. A lot of them have back, backgrounds in like actuarial finance and things like that. Mm -hmm. They're not like all strictly economists, but usually they have at least minored in economics. Yeah, yeah. So. Which I think that's that's a factor because the, the in game economies. Also, the structure in which uh, a lot of digital assets eventually would be rolled mm -hmm. out. When you look at really kind of forecasting out what this might look for a game in even the next right. six months or 12 months, depending on how far the game is, has come, is those are huge, huge issues yeah. that will have to be addressed. So it's cool that you guys are yes. doing that. I want to get into um, some of the node aspect, because there's many people sure. that have talked about a Gala node the mm -hmm. game nodes themselves. Mm -hmm. Explain to our audience the difference between, you know, a Gala node itself, which is kind of running sure. everything, a game sure. node, and then a player node. Sure. Okay. So the first thing that I, I need to do is let's touch on the founders nodes. Okay. The founders nodes are the core of the entire Gala ecosystem. Everything that mm -hmm. happens uh, in the Gala ecosystem and everything that happens on um, what most people would call Gala Chain happens across the Founders nodes. Okay, so by operating Founders nodes, you're you're operating a part of that entire network. Okay, now this means that NFT mintings, token mintings, all of that stuff goes through the Founders node, you know, process. Right. The game nodes specifically perform services for those dedicated games. So for example, a town node, a town star node will yep. allow you to eventually run your own town, okay? Um, without using any sort of uh, centralized service, you know, at all to run that town. Mm -hmm. um, and it will be something that, that, you know, allows you to have greater control, makes it so that you don't have to have your browser window open all the time. It will essentially handle some of that for you. Um, you know, things like that. Other types of game specific nodes may perform specific tasks for other games. Um, yeah. You know, they may be used for pre-rendering. They may be used to give you like a, a, a home base, if you will, you know, things like that. Um, then player nodes, okay, is where we skip over. This is part of the music ecosystem. Now, what the player nodes do is they will allow you to host and play 
uh, music NFTs. Okay, um, I don't want to go too much into the the ecosystem there, but your your music NFTs that you will then be able to play. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. um, there is a a play to earn uh, play to earn component there, or listen to earn components as well. So um, you can have your NFT. Eventually, you'll be able to place that NFT on your node. Other people will be able to listen to that NFT, and then you will get some credit for that. In very a nutshell, cool. that's that's just yeah. the very, very briefest touch on that ecosystem. It's massive. It's absolutely massive. So with the Townstar node license, like right now, I'm looking at the yeah. page. It's you know it's sold out, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. What What's the likelihood of other game nodes coming online and and or as we see expansion with projects like Townstar of more nodes opening up? I think that that as Townstar expands, you will see additional nodes for Townstar opening up um, that the the node release structure is very uh, tightly tied to DAU um, for Townstar. So it's a certain percentage of that. I don't recall the exact number, but. Yeah. You know, it's tied to that in some way, shape or form. Um, there will absolutely be other types of uh, absolutely be other types of nodes for other games that come online. It ultimately depends on what does that game need? Does it require pre-rendering? Does it require, you know, you to have a, a, a specific base that you want to be persistent? Um, you know, things like that. So as those requirements uh, are identified for for individual games. You will probably see other types of nodes there as well. I was looking at the distribution data here. This is just February mm -hmm. twenty one, um, and you can kind of see there. I mean, there's some fairly significant potentials here for yeah the variety of nodes. What is the the realistic expectation of an individual who's running? Let's let's just assume it's a town star node, a little bit more approachable from a price point uh, versus you know a founder node. What's the what's the realistic potential earning opportunity there? I wouldn't want to go too deeply into the concept of earnings, um, but it is it it can potentially if you have NFTs, it can make it a lot easier for you to reach your goals long term uh -huh. in Townstar itself. So right now, Townstar requires you to keep your browser window open. Okay, mm -hmm. and on top. So if you've got yep. multiple monitors, you know, I can throw my town up on my other monitor and that's fine, mm -hmm. no big deal, right? And I just babysit it and go click on things as necessary. What the town node does is that allows you to delegate all of that to the node itself to run. Um, now, as there's there's been a lot of discussion around town and the town economy and things like that. And, you know, we've been in beta, as, as everybody knows, as we come out of beta, you're going to see increasingly difficult challenges. Right now, to earn town, you have to earn a thousand stars uh, to be mm -hmm. included in the distribution in, in the game of town star. Um, that is going to be getting increasingly difficult and it's going to be yeah. getting more difficult um, based on, you know, what NFTs you're placing, how much town you're earning, how long you've been earning town, things like that. So having a node can really, really help you with that. Yeah, for sure. I see it. Um, and I think as we we look at you know more opportunities, because that's something I think that mm -hmm. is not, not unique to Gala, but the fact that you guys do have an array of opportunities here, especially from a node standpoint, right. people who are a little bit more technically savvy, willing to kind of step out on um, you know that kind of side of blockchain in, in terms right. of earning capacity, but also providing a, a great service to the network if you're really passionate about those those games and or that that project so a lot right. happening because i've seen guys who have been running you know different types of nodes for a variety of blockchain projects and they've been very very successful with those we've seen mining sure. projects on you know some of the projects like he name etc um i want to get into this project gyri i think i'm getting it right um gyri, first sure. tell, we can go with gyri. tell us what it is <laughs> So, so we've had for the longest time this, this discussion around the concept of Gala Chain, right? Mm -hmm. um, we know that no blockchain out there actually does what we need for games. Okay, just simply doesn't exist. Right. So we've had to build that ourselves. Now the question is, do we want to call that in the long run Gala Chain or not? You know, who knows? Um, but we know that if there's a test net, that test net probably shouldn't be called Gala Chain because then it gets mm -hmm. very confusing about where you're doing this. You know, so you have 
the Kusama Tessinet, you know, we've got Songbird and Flair, you know, that right. sort of thing. So Jiri is uh, our Tessinet for mm-hmm. Galachain. Gotcha. Um, okay. Or for whatever we eventually call Galachain. And um, right now it's in internal testing. Within the next couple of weeks, we'll be releasing a game, a very, very simple game. It's it's just a match three. It's not like a hugely complex, you know, MMORPG or anything like that. It's a simple game, but it generates tons and tons and tons of transactions. Um, and this is important because what we need to do is we need to get everybody there just hammering the chain as hard as they can to try to break it essentially. Yeah, sure. Um, and so that's what that is. What will be the first game to, to launch within that test net? Uh, well, it, it, I, I don't want to, I don't think we've released the name yet, but it's going to be that, that first, that first little, uh, match three that I was talking about. Okay. After that, you'll start seeing integration of spider tanks and you'll start seeing integration of, of other, uh, other games. Um, you know, grit is already working on building components of that you know, into their, into their game yeah. as well. All right. So there's a lot happening in the space. Um, Tons. What's, I mean, the, if you, if you look going forward, the, just the opportunities here, especially in, in, especially blockchain and, and metaverse, I think we're yeah. going to continue to see a lot of con- potential growth there. Um, all right. So with that being the case, talk to me about Gala and where that future, let's say the short term future, 2022, what that looks sure. like in terms of big achievements, some of the things that you guys are really trying to focus in on. Okay. Um, so there's a, there's a couple things. We have another couple events that are coming up. Um, mm-hmm. We've got uh, the next Galaverse, um, which is going to be happening in June. Uh, as I said, you're invited. Um, it's going to be very, very difficult for people to get uh, tickets to that. Um, the whitelist is already way oversubscribed. Right. Um, you know, so, so it's, it's, we put these events on mostly for our community, but the interesting sure. thing about them is, um, they are absolutely chalk packed full of announcements and things like that. So we've got a pretty impressive slate of stuff coming. That's going to be hitting at the, uh, at the next Galliver. So there should also probably be one, uh, in December as well, uh, about a year mm, okay. after the first, I don't know where that one's going to be. I do know where the second one's going to be, but I can't talk about it. It's a secret. Bucks will kill me. Yeah. Um, what is the what's the date on that one, or or at least the month? Uh, it's in June. It's okay, in June. so J- June uh, coming for Galaverse. Okay, so but, uh, yeah, you know, part two. I like it. What are your thoughts on Gala making a presence really known at E three and really kind of bridging that gap between what's happening in blockchain and traditional studios? You're going to start seeing us uh, showing up at more of these events. Um, okay. Um, specifically more of these non-blockchain events. Um, Um, I've been to so many blockchain conferences, like I could sneeze POAPs, Um, (laughs) but you're going to start seeing us at non-blockchain events, um, specifically connecting with, with game developers. Yeah. I, well, you know, that's the, that's really the, the currency these days, especially as we start to see an explosion in the game development moving yeah. in this direction. And and that kind of leads me into the area of acquisitions. You've seen, obviously, mm-hmm. Sony's acquisitions. Uh, you've looked at Microsoft Activision, Zynga Take-Two. Yeah. You know, there's just so many things happening in of, the traditional. A lot of consolidation happening in yeah. the traditional so space. where do you see that going and how will that affect, if at, all, if at all, the blockchain development architecture that needs to be in place over the next five years? It's an interesting question. So, so I think, and this is, this is purely my own feelings on the matter. Um, I think that the larger the company is, the harder it will be for that company to begin, you know, acting in an agile fashion in terms of right. integrating blockchain. Um, so, you know, some of these like Zynga, uh, yeah. you know, they were, they probably could have done some, some heavier NFT integrations now as they get, you know, acquired by larger and larger companies, you're going to see, I think, more and more of that kind of get shelved uh, because these larger companies are extremely risk averse. And because they they own a duty to the, you know, shareholders, um, it's a much harder proposition to go to a bunch of, uh, you know, a bunch of people who who have owned shares for years and say, hey, we want to do something with, uh, you know, magic internet money 
um, mm -hmm. and and cartoon pictures that we put in games. Um, mm -hmm. That's just a harder that's a harder sell for a larger company. Now it doesn't make it impossible. It doesn't make right. it impossible. But I think that it is unlikely that some of those companies will move quickly enough uh, to really get a foothold in the space. What you'll probably see um, is small experiments in NFT integration that right. don't really go deeply enough or connect with the sort of community. Um, and so it, it's, it's going to be seen sort of as like a, oh, well, you're just doing that so that you can say you're doing a metaverse thing, you know, sure. stuff like that. Um, yeah. And it probably won't really go anywhere. Um, well, I think, and I think to your point is that if you look at what's happened with just, let's just say meta in general, I mean, they had mm -hmm. one of the largest write downs uh, in the history of the company with their, in, their essential move into the metaverse. And I think you're, I'm kind of in the same camp you are, is I feel like the more agile uh, projects, the more agile developers are going yeah. to be able to one, uh, be able to bridge the gap in, uh, gap in terms of potential adoption. Because right now we're still at a fairly, na a fairly nascent stage of adoption. Yes, Yet absolutely. to see, you know, major moves. So I would agree that I think the big studios and in general, a lot of these acquisitions that are happening right now, they are playing for the headlines, I think, to a certain extent, yeah. trying to get that metaverse money, <laughs> so to speak. Right, and right. I mean, I, it'll be short. I think short that that's, lived, I, think. I think it's going to be very short lived. And I think that it's going to be interesting to kind of see how this this continues to evolve. I mean, yeah. one of the things that I think sets us different, sets us apart, sets us different, not very articulate, sets us apart from. Uh, everybody else in the space is that, you know, we have never taken any VC money. Yeah. You know, we haven't taken any VC money or PE money or anybody's money. We just do this, uh, you know, and we this this allows us to be incredibly agile. And if we see an opportunity to just go for it, because, you know, we don't have, uh, you know, all of that sort of dead weight uh, yeah. on the balance sheet dragging us down. How do you how do you pull the. I mean, when you don't take venture capital in, you're, you're, I mean, what is the potential opportunity there in terms of just revenue to be able to fund all of this, this development? So, so we, we find that, you know, I mean, okay, you, you take, you take VC funding from somebody, right? They, they write a, a check for a few million dollars at X valuation or something like that. And, yep. and you know, yeah, great. That gives you a little bit that you can do something with, um, but it doesn't free you up to, to, you know, actually make decisions based on what you know to be best. Suddenly you yep. now have to go to a board and, you know, maybe mm -hmm. they've got a seat and you have to have all these conversations and maybe mm -hmm. they don't agree. Um, you know, or maybe they they read an article in Kotaku that morning and the on the way to the meeting, and now you know NFTs are scary and they don't want to get involved. And you know, it, right. it, there's there's all of these things. I mean, so for us, you know, being being fundamentally self funded, you know, coming up with uh, you know NFT strategies and whatnot and ways that we can integrate these things into games that people like and having ecosystem products that has allowed us to do what we've done thus far. Yeah. Um, you know, and and that that freedom is very important. Yeah, it's a it's a rare case that one. I think the key is is that uh, the ability for Gala to reach out to the user base, the fan yeah. base of Gala has been just exceptional, and I think that oh, in itself, everyone's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's it really it does. You know, it's interesting because a lot of companies don't necessarily get to that level quick enough where they can do self funding whether it's through NFT or other creative mechanisms in which you create, you know, right. a, a generation of, of income, which is helps you kind of go to that next level, which is going to be tough because you've got music on deck, you've got developers on deck to really sway in. And then you've got game studios potentially that are mm -hmm. going to be great ones and they're going to be suited or courted by a lot of people that eventually yes. there's going to be a little bit of that, uh, I think, pushback. So it's going to be interesting to watch. Sure, sure. Guys kind of move into that uh, into those waters for sure. Last question for you. We're looking at metaverse, whatever we want to call it, in the future, and we're 18 months down the road here. Lots of game development mm. has happened in the space. Blockchain gaming, Bitcoin maybe is at 100K by then. What's the, what's the industry going to look like then? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, what's I the think, industry going to look like? See, I think we've got another little bit of a crypto winter that's going to potentially sneak up on us here. Yeah. Um, 
whether whether that happens or not, and again, this is one of the things that makes us unique. It doesn't really matter to us because um, we're going to keep doing this regardless. Right. Um, you know, but I think that you're going to see a lot of dead wood get cleared out eventually. Yeah. Um, I think that there's a lot of projects right now, and you saw this at the ICO, you know, at the mm-hmm. ICO phase as well, where you had a whole bunch of projects that really fundamentally shouldn't have been there. Um, and they were just there because it was a very rich environment. Um, and there's going to be a little bit of a, a shock that knocks a few of those out. Yeah. Um, I think, though, that you're going to see continued uh, continued growth. We're on target to, you know, scale we'll probably double another couple times before the end of the year is what we're thinking uh just at the wow. rate that we're going um yeah we had i think 16 new people start this morning um man i need you know, to be your hr so, team <laughs> dude just to be able to dude, onboard them they hate people. to be our hr team too <laughs> onboarding is not an easy thing to do i mean especially when you um, you know, we're working in, in countries all over the world. Yeah. So it's not like you're, you're, you're doing your normal W2 onboarding mm-hmm. with a, you know, person down the street and they sit down and they sign a few papers. I mean, it's like, okay, well, we're hiring, you know, developers in Belgium. What does that yeah. look like? How do we yeah. handle that? You know, it's, it's a very interesting, interesting thing. Um, yeah, for sure. But yeah, I think that the industry is going to continue to grow. I think that you're going to see blockchain gaming being integrated as an integral part of gaming right now it's kind of like this little side thing it's going to be a more accepted uh thing within the next 18 months i would imagine um and yeah i think that there's going to be just lots and lots of growth all around excellent stuff jason brink of course head of blockchain over there at gala games great to have you on the show again we we definitely got to get uh the music uh team on get Sarah here on here. Talk get Sarah. You need Sarah to that. Yeah. I love it. Anyway, Jason, thanks again for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. All right. Okay. You guys are, are tuned in over on the podcast right now. That's great that you're there. We love the audio side of our show. And of course you can leave us some stars over here, but the number one place is catch videos and our breakdowns of projects and also these deep dive interviews that we do with uh, teams like Gala are right here on the YouTube channel. And that's the easiest place to find us. You just search Paul Barron Network. You'll find us. Click the like button and make sure and subscribe, of course. If you want to reach out to us, you can hit me up on Twitter at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.